Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. The tokenized asset market could hit $16 trillion on public blockchains, guys. This coming from the Ripple X VP. Institutional investors and asset managers and banks are racing to bring financial assets on chain in a market estimated to grow to $16 trillion in value. And uh, I mean, it's crazy to think how big a trillion is compared to a billion. I know it's it's just one up, right? But when you visualize that sum of money, it is just mind blowing. Uh, this goes on to say traditional finance firms have warmed up to the idea of tokenizing financial assets on public blockchains as the race towards blockchain based tokenization does heat up. And so according to Ripple X senior vice president Marcus Infanger, trade five players are finally bringing financial assets on chain as they look to deploy uh, for production and solve pain points in various value chains. So we're seeing the race ramp up. In this morning's video, I did talk a little bit about the real world utility, how it's going to affect BRICS, and how Jim Willie even comments that XRP will directly be involved with BRICS nations and value transfers. If you guys didn't catch this morning's video, I will link it up here in the top right hand corner. Ripple X's in Fanger, he did say, we're starting to see a paradigm shift for blockchain technology moving beyond the hype and into more real world utility. In this morning's video too, uh, I did talk a little bit about Monica Long discussing this fact that, uh, you know, 2024 into 2025, this is when we're going to see the real world utility. And I mean, I'm just putting two and two together, guys. The bull run is happening 2024, 2025, when we do see XRP liquidity ramp up. This is when, uh, I mean, I guess logistically it would make sense for them to flip that switch and, uh, you know, decide, okay, okay, now we're going to start using XRP at scale. The markets are liquid and then the rest will be history. So the executive also said that research estimates pin the future value of tokenized asset markets at $16 trillion, which is eight times bigger than the total market capitalization of the entire crypto sector. So just think of where uh, of where these utility coins, because don't forget too, 99% of the other cryptocurrencies are probably just going to disappear, poof. And then, you know, that 1% of cryptocurrencies that uh, does perform an actual task, that does solve real problems, those cryptocurrencies are going to take up the lion's share of this uh, initial $16 trillion. Here's another quote. A couple of years ago, many of us in this space were envisioning that it's getting closer to reality and it's happening on public blockchains. At some point, it looked like it would only happen on JPM coin or IBM. But now guys, it's looking like it's going to happen on uh, the XRP ledger and other projects that are doing similar things. So just wanted to share that with you guys. Some great news here coming from uh, Marcus and Fanger, Ripple XVP. And because, you know, the XRP community seems to be getting more excited, uh, you know, in some ways, maybe not in other ways, you know, price is still languishing. We are starting to see a lot more of uh, the, you know, this kind of news pop up. Now, this again, a very old, uh, a very old uh, announcement here from back in 2018. Apple introduces Interledger API for Apple Pay payments. Uh, we still haven't gotten any more uh, updated information on this, but uh, at this point in time, it was noted that Apple Pay was going to be using the Interledger extension from Ripple. Uh, I don't know if they, uh, you know, decided to shelve it at the moment, perhaps because they did not have the regulatory clarity in the United States yet. Uh, and because uh, I'm assuming Apple Pay is probably most popular in the US, uh, if they could not get that regulatory status in the United States, they probably had to kind of sit back on it. Nevertheless, it is good, guys, to remember that these uh, partnerships are still brewing on the back burner. So it is, uh, you know, definitely something to be watching in the coming months once we do have that regulatory clarity set and clear. So wanted to thank Sir Trades a lot there just for posting that. On top of which, guys, we're seeing Ripple partners like TerraPay. They are extending their partnerships in a strategic move aimed at enhancing financial inclusion and broadening remittance services. VM Money Transfer Services has forged a new partnership with Ripple-enabled TerraPay, a leading global provider for cross-border payment solutions. VM Money Transfer Services caters to a diverse clientele seeking to send funds uh, to Jamaica from various corners of the globe, including the entirety of Europe, the UK, the US, Canada, the Cayman Islands, and Turks and Caicos. Uh, through this newly established collaboration, VM Money Transfer gains access to TerraPay's advanced online platform, streamlining cross-border transactions for customers spanning approximately 30 international markets. So, of course, they're using RippleNet and XRP. TerraPay has been enabled for uh, quite some time now, and considering, uh, well, I think all of these countries, except for, uh, well, fully the United States, all of these countries already have made commitments in some way, shape or form, whether it's uh, through some of their banks or governments uh, to RippleNet utilization of RippleNet, that it would only make sense uh, to see more utility for RippleNet in these particular countries through this partnership and uh, confirmed partner TerraPay. So that is also great news. Again, the web guys keeps growing. RippleNet adoption, as Brad Garlinghouse said in 2019, is going to be a flywheel effect. Once we do start seeing, uh, you know, the smaller companies really kind of roll with it, uh, amped up liquidity, amped up volume, 
that's when we're going to start to see, uh, you know, bigger institutions and governments really start to uh, latch on and utilize RippleNet in a meaningful capacity. So that is some great news that uh, I thought I'd share with you guys today. Some more Ripple partner news. Finastra has launched online marketplaces for easy access to retail lending solutions. So this site allows financial institutions to browse directly, purchase, and quickly adopt Finastra retail lending products. They just launched something called the Solution Store. This is an innovative online platform that offers customers the convenience of browsing and purchasing Finastra retail lending solutions. Uh, the innovative online platform streamlines the procurement process, making solutions available to purchase around the clock. The Solution Store also enables customers Customers to purchase retail lending solutions without the need for a meeting, email, phone call, or contact. Customers can securely access the solution store from Finastra's customer success community and receive an email outlining the purchases, uh, outlining, excuse me, the purchase and next steps at checkout. This simple process accelerates adoption, allowing customers to enjoy the benefits of Finastra solutions sooner than the typical industry standard implementation schedules. And guys, here is a quote. The solution store from Finastra is already helping our team find the solutions we need and we need for them, says Keith uh, McClendon here, business support manager at FLC Bank. As we all know, sometimes our days get crowded with meetings and taking care of customers. With this new agile marketplace now online, I can browse and learn about solutions at my own pace, making it easier than ever to deploy new products that enhance both our operations and customer experience. And guys, they're doing this through Ripple Partner Finastra, one of those large Ripple partners that dabbles in, uh, you know, quite a bit in the financial tech industry. Uh, so, you know, the fact that Ripple has been partnered with Finastra for a long time, I think does uh, add another layer to uh, everything that uh, Finastra does, uh, and it's not just Finastra, it's Temenos, it's ACI Worldwide, some of the bigger companies that are partnered with Ripple that have been partnered with Ripple for a while. When we do see, uh, you know, new solutions, new innovative uh, applications for finance and uh, tracking, you know, supply chain management, what have you, uh, it does make sense that you know, because the industry is moving to DLT platforms and blockchain, that these guys would be running on something like the XRP ledger, even though it is not explicitly mentioned here. Uh, you know, because again, we know about the partnerships, we know about the utility, we know about the back end solutions, how it all works behind the curtain. But, uh, you know, for the retail side, the end user, you know, they don't need to know exactly how XRP moves boom in the blink of an eye. They just need to know that their product works. So it's great to see Ripple partners, big Ripple partners like Finastra, really kind of uh, knocking it out of the park with uh, more partnerships like this, helping more customers find solutions for their problems. I'm hearing it from all angles too, right? Regulations are about to come in and change everything. This one courtesy of Cypress Domenicor here on Twitter. 2024 and into 2025. This is the timeline, guys, that we have now been told uh, numerous times, time and time again, uh, you know, probably going to bank on the liquidity of the bull run. What's going to happen likely is a lot of these companies, Ripple included, realize that they need the liquidity in order to scale. So they're all, I think, probably assuming that, okay, we're pretty good to go when it comes to the regulatory clarity. The last piece of the puzzle we need is that liquidity and then boom, it's takeoff time. They're even echoing it here, guys. Listen to this. And I'm going to switch gears a little bit to talk about the market infrastructure and data side. So LED, what key trends have you been seeing lately around here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll try to make it simple and to anchor this on like three different points. The first one being around the, the changes that are inherent to the new um, different requirements coming up with some of the accountant standards. I'm sure if you're in the US, you may have heard of FSIB. If you're in Europe, you may have heard of like DAC8. Um, we'll talk about Mika and, and other uh, regulations. The regulatory framework is going to change the way you operate. So we've talked a lot about policy changes and legal requirements. There is one other thing that's important to understand when you navigate the digital asset space is all of those requirements have a di direct operational impact. What we are seeing in the market as a data provider is that we're seeing a convergence towards traditional finance standards. Um, I think the previous panel was talking about MIFID, MIFIR, and others that you probably know very well in traditional finance. We are also seeing an increase in terms of reporting with DAC8 and FSAB. Now you need to report on the fair value of digital assets. Um, we're going through like a transition year in 2024 with everything you know effective in 2025. So definitely, you know, when you operate in the system, you need to have the right partners. You you need to like get more maturity in your operating systems because the way things were working before will not work 25. Increase in terms of reporting with DAC8 and FSAB. Now you you need to report on the fair value of digital assets. Um, we're going through like a transition year in 2024 with everything, you know, effective in 2025. So definitely, you know, when you operate in the system, you need to have the right partners. You'll, you need to like get more maturity in your operating systems because the way things were working before will not work anymore. So repeated it a second time there in case you did not catch it. Uh, 2024, that pivotal year, that transformative year, 
and then everything is going to change into 2025. So crypto adoption, guys, coming in 2025 for sure at the height of the bull market. If you guys have been uh, watching my videos, you probably already know that, uh, you know, the market is really going to start uh, really kind of pumping after we do see that Bitcoin having right now. We are seeing uh, this is, by the way, the total market cap. So uh, maybe I should just bring up Bitcoin because Bitcoin is the leader of the pack and uh, the mover of the market. Why do I keep doing that? Uh, let's zoom in here real quickly, guys. The halving is coming up very soon. We're seeing Bitcoin price uh, rebounding a little bit today. We are uh, hanging up above that sixty thousand dollar level for BTC, but we could, in fact, see uh, you know see uh, you know more retracement before we start to see that huge parabolic shift to the upside. It's happened time and time again throughout history. Every single Bitcoin halving is uh, you know followed by a retrace and then that liquidity pump, which will pump the market uh, three, four, five X. I don't know at this point in time how high the market is going to go. Some are predicting $10 trillion by the end of 2025. So, I mean, companies are getting ready, right? 2024 is the pivotal year. Uh, all the legislation is coming to pass. And then 2025 for real world adoption. So I wanted to thank Cypress Domenicor there just for posting that. Michael Branch, guys, bringing this to our attention. Now, Chad Steingraber, a professional game developer, has provided explanations why XRP, the cryptocurrency associated with Ripple Labs, is underperforming despite recent partnerships and payment utility. And I think this is probably the clearest uh, explanation we've gotten so far, okay? So I know we're all upset that XRP is not uh, really trading at the prices that we want. Uh, as of the latest coin market cap data, XRP is only trading at around 49 cents, representing a 1.7% increase in the past day with its market cap standing at $27 billion. And the trading volume, guys, it's down by 34.9%, indicating dwindling interest from investors. But guys, this is all just surface level stuff in a spec market. But according to Chad Steingraber, one of the major reasons XRP's underperformance is so, uh, well, prominent and uh, I guess mainly relative is because of this. If you think of where the real utility is happening right now, it is through OTC trading. And I'm going to explain that uh, in more depth here. So Chad did post this, okay? And again, a great explanation here. I, I urge you guys to follow Chad Steingraber on Twitter if you're not already. The reason XRP price is not affected by today's partnerships and ODL and payment utility use is described below. All use of XRP globally today is essentially OTC trading. So that's over-the-counter trading, guys. That does not touch public crypto exchanges. So you got to think the, uh, the XRP uh, utility today is going through over-the-counter trading, meaning Ripple has sold XRP directly to the companies that are using XRP. So that XRP does not touch Binance. It does not touch Upbit. It does not touch BitBuy. It does not touch OKX, uh, Gate, uh, Gate.io, KuCoin, etc., Kraken, Coinbase. So that XRP does not see the exchanges, and the exchanges is where we actually see price realization. If there's more supply of XRP than demand, the price goes down. And if there's more demand for XRP than supply, the price goes up. That is just simple supply and demand fundamentals. But as Chad points out here, guys, the ODC trading means that the XRP is going over the counter, not hitting the exchanges, and this is why we're not seeing XRP price move. But they cannot keep it this way forever. Traditional finance cannot use crypto exchanges like Kraken or Binance due to regulation. So this is another key point that uh, I think Chad, uh, that I want to make here, but also that Chad is on the right track. Bank of America is not going to source XRP through Kraken. Sorry to burst your bubble. So it's not, uh, it's not regulated, it's not legislated yet. We do have some uh, clarity now in the United States, but you know all those other bills have to pass with regards to crypto clarity. And uh, you know XRP being not a security, that's one step in the right direction, obviously. But guys, at the end of the day, it's not the only thing that we need in order for XRP to really be utilized at scale. So we seem to be in a pickle, right? They're using it, but not publicly. So how does the price go up by utility? Well, the answer is simple. It doesn't, at least not for now. It doesn't matter what the price is. It works regardless. The difference is volume versus supply, guys. And again, this is why we need the regulatory clarity, why it's so important. The volume of transfers that depends on XRP is key because obviously millions of dollars per day is much different than trillions of dollars per day. So another key point here that I think Chad makes that I think it's important to understand what a million dollars looks like versus a billion dollars or a trillion dollars. This is a hundred million dollars here. I don't know if you guys can see back here. That's a million but uh, let me just play through this. Uh, don't worry about the text. Just for visual representation here, that's $100 million compared to $1 billion. Now, right now, what we tend to see is we tend to see, uh, you know, a lot of these companies 
working in the billions, okay? The Tranglos and the Neums and all those companies, they are still, uh, you know, transferring, not even billions, to be honest with you. Billion is probably the top end, but millions, tens of millions of dollars running through the XRP ledger, uh, you know, leveraging XRP for on-demand liquidity or Ripple payments or what have you, however, whatever you want to call it. But that's a billion, okay, at the most. But guys, when you compare $1 billion versus $1 trillion, <laughs> this is $1 trillion, okay? So you compare that and look at right back in there. Can you see that right back in there? That's the billion. But this is the trillion lined up two levels tall. Okay, this is uh, it in comparison with a truck. This is the kind of volume, guys, where we need to see XRP demand skyrocket. And where are they going to get this XRP if there's only 100 billion of them in existence? Again, 1 billion versus 1 trillion. Okay, I think you guys get my point here. So when volumes do pick up due to business dependency, they will demand more XRP because they need it to send XXX amount of dollars. When they demand more, they will start acquiring XRP from any source they can, including the public. So again, guys, this is why Ripple has been a stark supporter of the automated market maker, because we, the public, can be automated market makers. For any given pair of assets, there can be up to one AMM in one ledger. Anyone can create the AMM for an asset pair if uh, it doesn't exist yet or deposit to an existing AMM. Those who deposit assets into the AMM are called liquidity providers and receive LP tokens from the AMM. And then liquidity tokens enable liquidity providers to redeem their tokens for a share of the asset of the AMM pools, vote to change the AMM's fee settings and bid some of their LP tokens to receive a temporary discount on AMM trading fees. So again, guys, we are supposed to participate in these mechanisms, or at least, uh, you know, it is encouraged to do this if you are an XRP holder and they're trying to incentivize us to do so. Ripple, again, is a big supporter of this. Uh, and this is why, this is why Ripple also has uh, other products like liquidity pools, uh, lines of credit, all ways for these uh, companies to be able to acquire XRP in some way, shape or form. So when they demand more, they will start acquiring XRP from any source they can, including the public. The utility side is on 50% of the equation. The other 50% is the investment side with ETF funds taking out the public supply. So that's the other thing too, guys. Once we do have an XRP ETF, well, there will be even more demand for XRP at that point in time. The bottom line is that astronomical prices will come from a complete depletion from the public supply. As my theories play out, enjoy the ride. And so again, I, uh, I urge you guys to follow Chad Steingraber if you're not following him already. It's only a matter of time, guys. The real world utility... And as per Monica Long's comment uh, from this morning's video, I really want you guys to watch this morning's video. Here's another clip of Monica Long from her recent Brazil visit, courtesy of Sento Sumo Saba here on Twitter. Listen to this. Bitcoin price by the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure by the end of the year, although I think it's possible that in my mind it'll break over 100,000. But I do believe that Bitcoin can reach a million dollars plus over time. But I believe it not because it's a store of value, because it will become maybe one of the most important status symbols of the digital economy in the future? I, I would say the more important place for us all to focus is on real world utility for the assets. And that's what's going to drive long-term value and stability and, and liquidity for all the assets in crypto. But I, I will say like for Brazil, this is a place where we are seeing a really ripe ground for that kind of development. You have a government that has embraced and given clarity around virtual assets. You have a vibrant developer community and you have traditional finance banks like Itaú embracing it. So that, that's the mixture of uh, the, the, the ripe breeding ground for crypto. Wasn't willing to comment on Bitcoin price. However, just hitting that point home, the real world utility is where we're going to see that value for those cryptocurrencies that solve problems like XRP. But don't take it from me. That's from Monica Long. Still my opinion, though, too. But I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.